Good. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're now continuing our learning in this book, which is called the Kuti Torah, which is a compilation of the speeches, which are put into essay form, of the first Rebbe of Chabad, basic ideas of Chabad, Hasidut. And just for newcomers, or just to remind old people, to remind people that are already been here, and to remind myself, the whole purpose of the creation of the world. It says the world was created only for the Jews. The world was created for the Jews in the Torah. What does that mean? Nobody is important. Only the Jews are important. Exactly the opposite. And the world was created for the Jews to fix up by means of the Torah. In other words. Everyone else is tremendously important. The Jews and the Torah were created for them, right? The Jews and the Torah were created for the world, for the world, for the non-Jews, to fix up the whole entire world, that the whole, like we said, to fix up the world with the kingship of God. We say in the Aleinu prayer three times a day, all mankind, it's all the evil people will turn to you. So that's the idea of, of Judaism, and that's what started with Abraham. Abraham was called nothing less than the father of all mankind. He wasn't called the father of the upper worlds or the father of the heaven or father of spirit. Or the <clears throat> he was called. He wasn't called the son of God, even though it's true. Every Jew is the son of God. He's not called Abraham. We got his name changed when he circumcised himself. His name got changed from Av Ram, which means a very high father, very high spiritual person, to be Avraham, the father of all of the non-Jews. Abraham. That's what the word Abraham means. Av Hamon Goyim. That's what it says in the that's what God said, says in the Torah. So we're just carrying this out. It's very, 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 very essential. Each and every human being is very important because the whole world is important. And, the, and human beings are the, are the highest thing in the world. Human beings. And Jews, we're the lowest part, if you want to call it, the representatives of God. That's who we are. We're public servants. Okay, the, the, this, we've been working at this. I mean, as, as you can understand, it's not so simple. Because this idea is so tremendously, tremendously important and who, nobody cares about. Who cares about this idea? <clears throat> It's something like God, right? God is everywhere. God is creating everything. God is enlivening everything. Without God, there's no existence. There's no world. There's no life. Who cares about God? Who knows about God? Even the other religions, they, they got the totally wrong idea of what God is. A little tiny, maybe, idea that God is a spiritual force or whatever. But the fact is God creates the spiritual. God creates everything. And he creates it. Why? For me and you. And who feels that? Well, Mashiach is going to finish the work of Abraham. He's going to make it that everybody does feel the most important and obvious and vital fact in the world is God. That God is creating us. That God loves us. That God has demands from us. That's it. this thing here. Okay. My head is not fixed. So we said... That's the job of man, the first man. First man was created in order to fix up the world. That's what it says. Man was put into the world. He was put into, in that time, the world was called Gan Eden. It was, the world was heaven on earth. And man was put in, in the world to improve it, to make it better than heaven. So therefore, the first thing that man did <clears throat> says that man declared that God is the king of the world. He declared it to the animals, declared it to the... Nevertheless, that's the unique ability of man is to realize that there's a creator. To realize that there's a creator. That only man can do this. <clears throat> to realize that what he sees and what he thinks and what he understands is only like the tip of the iceberg. And all the worlds, the spiritual worlds and everything as real as they are and going to heaven and, and all these other motivations that there are in the world, that, that, that's all, you say, the external of the external of the external of reality. And that when we see what real reality is, namely that there's a creator, so we realize we're much more important than we thought. 
I thought God left all the heavens and everything and he came and he created me and you and every human being in the world. So he said, that was accomplished, by, and, and we accomplished this Rosh Hashanah. Every Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is the anniversary of the birthday of Adam, which we said parenthetically that only religion that knows or even cares when the world was created are the Jews. Because the essence of Judaism is this world. Right? Go to, go to a, you know, someone in India. In India, they have like 40,000 different religions or something. What was the date the world was created? You know, I don't know exactly it was created. Huh? Go to a Muslim, a Christian. What's the exact date the world was created? You know, when it was created. Who cares? The main thing is to get out of here. Go to the heaven, go to heaven. The Jews, people say, no, no, we know exactly the date, the day that the world was created. The world, God began the world and it took him six days. And the day he created man, we know exactly that day. We've been celebrating it since the beginning of time. Well, since the Torah was given anyway. I guess before that, even Abraham's celebrated. And what happened that there was the day that man was created? And when man was created, so God said, okay, I, now, now I finished the whole business. Now it's in your hands. But you're created to fix up, to maintain, to improve, to bring blessing to the world. And one of the main ways you do it is by sounding the shofar. That's the whole thing of the shofar. And there's other discourses which explain much more in depth and in detail, what exactly the shofar is that one end is narrow, the other end is wide, and et cetera. There was the shofar that was sounded in, the, in, in Yom Kippur, in the Holy Temple, and there was the shofar in the Yo, Jo Jubilee year, Yovel. Then there was the shofar that was sounded on Mount Sinai. Uh, it says it was a big call, call shofar. All these shofars are like nothing compared to the shofar of the Mashiach. He says, when we sound the shofar now, every year in Rosh Hashanah, is that brings a whole new blessing into the year. And the Rebbe explained a little bit in Kabbalistic terms, Mamali call me, Soviv call me. It brings a whole new blessing, makes a whole new year. It changes, so to speak, the creator's mind, how the next year is going to be. That's why God made the world. He made, that's the way God made the world. Every Rosh Hashanah, he makes an inventory, how to make the new world, how to make the world new. And not only that, sounding the shofar erases all of our sins because it makes a new world. So the past becomes improved and the, the, the negative things of the past, they just fade away. Of course, it has to be accompanied by the proper attitude and et cetera, and th that we accept God as being a king and we, we at least realize that we are not the king. So that's what the Rosh Hashanah is. All this, all this that we've just explained, all these Kabbalistic ideas, and how God creates the world, and how God, we change the world, and how we bring blessing into the world, and we make a new world. This is talking about with the shofar, this is talking about the shofar of Rosh Hashanah. Shalzen, Neymar, and this it says, Hashem, Elohim, B'Shofar Yitka. It says that God, these names of God, the shofar, now, it, there are a lot of different names of God. And it's very easy to, to, to make a big mistake and, and think that there's a lot of different gods. Huh? Or I, there's, there was a, once it was a very popular thing that there are several authors of the Bible because we can see there's the, you know, in the beginning, there's the Elohim version and then there's the this version and there's the Adon, Adonai version and this. The, okay, that, that's, you know, very nice theory. I guess these guys made a living from this, but... That's not true, simply not true. What is true, <clears throat> what is true is there's only one God, but God has a personality. And according to God's personality, that's the different names of God. How God, when God the, 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 uh, exhibits or whatever, uses his power, then he's called the name Elohim, or sometimes he's called the name Shaddai. When it's kindness, then it's called the name Ale. We don't say Ale, we say Kale. Okay, so these are all names of God, and those are all aroused by when we sound the shofar of Allah, Tid Lavo, but in the future with the Mashiach, it says, it will be on that day, it says, there will be sounded a great shofar. It doesn't even say who's sounding it. Here it says, the shofar that we sound now, that we arouse God, God reacts with these different names. 
Hashem, you, that's Aleph Dalit Nun Yud, that's God's name, another name of God, with these aspects of God. But in the future, it's not going to be any aspects of God. It's going to be the essence of God. What's the essence of God? What does this mean? This is above all aspects. Let's see. The Indian Kihine, behold, Kavar Nisper, we already explained the idea of the shofar of Rosh Hashanah, Shahu, that it is, Laham Sheikh, the draw down. I want to make this bigger because it's hard for me to see. One second. Oh. <clears throat> The Indian is what that it's we've already explained the whole thing of the shofar of Rosh Hashanah, which is to draw down this memali call me and this aspect of God that he fills all the worlds, which that's the idea of God's kingship. Remember, that's what we learned in the last few days. You can look back on the YouTube, all the classes are there. Like the rabbi say, God is saying, say in front of me sentences of kingship to make me a king, remember, and to make that I should remember. The king Lamalos call a pagamim, and also we said to fill all the sins, all of the hollow places that were made in the name of Yud Kevavke. <clears throat> this name of Yud Kevavke is the Torah. From there comes the Torah. <clears throat> when we go against the Torah, so we, so to speak, we, how do you say, we make a blemish in the relationship between us and God. Huh? Like a marriage contract. The Torah is a marriage contract. Marriage contract. A person comes home and he says to his wife, right, where's my food? Where's my food? Right? You never do anything at home. So what type of a thing to say is that? All of a sudden the wife gets mad. Oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. What do you mean you're sorry? What did you say? A thing like that? But Oh, that mars the relationship. Huh? You say one of these jokes, you know, about how bad wives are and how the guy wants his, his, he hates his wife. Some joke, uh, everybody laughs, but his wife doesn't laugh. That mars the relationship. The same thing with the Jewish people. The Torah is the marriage document. The ketuvah is the marriage document. And when we don't act properly, it puts a blemish in the marriage. Uh, that's the whole year. When we sound the shofar, is all of a sudden everything goes back. Second honeymoon, third honeymoon. Now we got the 5,783rd 5, honeymoon is coming up soon. Unless you want to count from the giving of the Torah, then it's 3,334th uh, honeymoon. Reminds every, the Jews of the first shofar that we heard, all the Jews heard at Mount Sinai. That's the regular shofar that we sound. This is what's called the, the order of the worlds. mamali. This is what fills the worlds. Like we said, God's name is Yud, and then Hey, and then Vav. Yud is Chachma. That's one aspect of God, etc. And this is coming down, and where, where do we draw from? We draw from this level, which is called how God surrounds the world. That this is God's pure upper will, and by means of this, it fills up all of the blemishes, all of the names of God that we blemished, and etc. That's regular shofar. Avo him calls it, but nevertheless, that's the shofar that we sound. But nevertheless, this is called a regular shofar, and it's not called the big shofar. In the time of Mashiach, there's going to be a big shofar. What's the difference between how big it is, what how small it is? None of that. What does it mean? It's a, it's it's a regular shofar. It's a we're going to, the Mashiach is going to have a big shofar. What can be bigger than Soviv Kalomin, than the aspect of God, which surrounds all definitions, which is higher than even the fact that He's a creator? <clears throat> we're saying that when we sound the shofar, that we fix up all the blemishes that were made in the chain of creation and the chain of holiness and the chain of the re relationship between us and God by drawing down from a higher source. What's that higher source? A source which is infinite above everything. That's the shofar we sound. That's a regular shofar. But the, the Mashiach is gonna, is gonna have a big shofar. It's not really the Mashiach is gonna have the shofar. It's gonna, the shofar is gonna be sounded. God is gonna sound the shofar. <laughs> That's gonna be bigger. What could be bigger than that? Bigger than infinite, it makes no sense. And what do you need it for? You get, you have this <clears throat> shofar that we sound, gets rid of all the sins. It's good enough. What do you have to have a big shofar? And yeah, the answer is like this. Even this level, which we call, which is surrounds all the worlds. 
even though that it is masha eno mislabesh, it is not grasped in the worlds, it is infinitely, infinitely real, and it's not grasped or defined to any sort of a world. And this, we said, is the level of God that he says, I never change, like we explained before. But nevertheless, because this aspect of God, which we arouse on Rosh Hashanah, this is a, a level of God, arouse, which is not in the world, but nevertheless, it is, how do you say, relevant to the world. It is not finite. It is not defined. In other words, it has some sort of a relationship with the world. In Cain, if so, who begetter begetter only? Right? God is not spiritual. He creates the spiritual. These are all, so to speak, definitions a little bit of God. Come on, Alder, what could be higher than that? We'll see. Like it says, it's like the heavens and the earth. The heavens surround the earth. And the and, and Sobavim, Sobiv, and it goes around the earth, right? This in a big circle all the time. That even though that it's very, very high, the heavens. We can't even imagine what the ends of the heavens are. Me'ala'oritz, ad'oritz, irak gargir, and the earth is just like a little, what do you say, like a little seed in, in, in relation to the heavens, right? The relation to the heavens, the earth is like nothing, right? It's one billionth or one trillionth or something. Of, of even the biggest stars, how much more so the space between the stars. So that's something like Soviv Kalmim. Nevertheless, there's some sort of a comparison between the heavens and the earth. Because the heavens do surround the earth. But this is just an example to get us a little bit sort of in the direction what the Rebbe is trying to tell us. The heavens are higher than the earth. Or maybe we can give a better example. I don't know if it's bad. We can't give a better example on the Rebbe, but the spiritual and the physical. The spiritual encompasses the physical. I don't think he wants to use that example because we're going to see in one second that the essence of God, this level of soviv kolmim, is above spiritual and physical. And nevertheless, this aspect of God, which is soviv kolmim, that we are roused by sounding the shofar, this is totally above the world. It's totally incomprehensible. But nevertheless, it is compared to the world. Similar, we can understand soviv kolmim and malikom, these two aspects of the world. How God surrounds the worlds and God fills the worlds. That even though that the level of soul we've called you, that God surrounds the world, that God is above the spiritual. This is what's called Ein Sov. This is what we call God is unlimited, Lagabi Aura, but only in comparison to this ray of God which is creating the worlds. The Lokomo Bagashmas, it's not like the heavens and the earth, that both of them are really limited. So the Rebbe is explaining what's exactly not accurate about his example that he gave. But nevertheless, <clears throat> even though the, this aspect of God, which is called Soviv Kalmi, is infinitely, infinitely more real and unlimited than the heavens are compared to the earth, but nevertheless, <inaudible> but it is called a name. <inaudible> and it does create the world. This still is God as he is related to the creation. It surrounds at least the creation. Who be Eric? So therefore, it's somehow connected to the worlds. <clears throat> Key because you can see if it says Haluhu Karov Gudlo, Karov Gudlo. We should praise God like His great because of God's great greatness. Rov Gudlo. There's har a lot of these different levels of God's greatness, one above the other, until unlimited. In the books of Kabbalah, it says that when God created the world, that He, <clears throat> so to speak removed his light. This cannot be taken literally. It's really he removed the revelation of his light. Okay, he removed his light and he shot down a new beam of light of creation. It said that came down and it then it surrounded. And then it from that surrounding level, it came down again, a straight line, and then it surrounded again. So Soviv Choser the Eagle. So right, Nimsha Choser the Eagle, it says. It came down and it surrounded. It came down and surrounded. So this level of that God surrounds the world, there's levels of surrounding that are higher than that. But that's all part of, so to speak, reality, if you want to call it, that we can relate to somewhat. Either we relate to in a positive way or a negative way. God is not measurable. He is not comprehensible. He's not. 
Therefore, it says, Karov Gudlo. Therefore, we praise God. It's one of the Psalms of, and we say it in the morning in prayer. <clears throat> that there's so many different types of greatness of God. Umasha Atan, what is now called Soviv, Umakif, will reveal that it was really an inside level. That's the Indian of Vayomahu. When there's revealed the essence of God, we'll see that all these levels of Soviv, they were just levels. It was just part of the creation. Like I said, from this beam that was drawn down, it's surah. The Bahual Dirach Mashkatu, the Omer Bayomahu, he nailokinu ze. Who, the level of who, which is now incomprehensible, that's like Soviv Kalmim, Satim, concealed, Soviv Kalmim, like we said before, it will be called who? And this level it will be called Ze. I'm sorry. He nailokinu ze, that this level of who which is concealed, soviv kolmim, etc. Like it says in these different books, hu asanu, hu, and liyiyeh latid lavo, but in the future, when the big shofar is sounded, it will be ze. It'll be revealed to us in a revealed way. Okay, just so that we don't get too kabbalistic over here and mysterious and, and freaky. And, and, and what do we call it? Irrelevant. So we have to understand what we're talking about here now is talking about reality. We're talking about everybody that's, that, that exists thinks that they're real, right? I think I'm real, here I am. Which that's okay, because, because you take yourself serious, that's good. The problem is when you think you're the only reality. As soon as people realize there's a greater reality than them, so then that sort of puts you in your place. That's the idea of religion. All the religions in the world, you should know that they're spiritual. There's a spiritual level, there's whatever a God that controls your future, it controls it. It puts you in your place a little bit. A little bit. It puts you in your place, right? So you should know that these spiritual levels that all the other religions are talking about, that's all part of the creation. Then there's a level which is called the creator. He surrounds all the worlds. That's so they call me. He surrounds all the worlds. That's ab oh, above the spiritual. Ooh, that's really something. Huh? Above, this, above the spiritual? What is this? What's it? Above this? Yes. There's a creator. God creates the spiritual. <clears throat> that there's even a name for it. That's called how God surrounds the world. It's called Ensof. Oh, this is pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Says, yeah, but that's uh, that's not really the essence of Judaism. The essence of Judaism is something much, much greater than that. Than just that God creates the spiritual and He's infinitely high. That's sort of a description, a description of God. <clears throat> In the future, there's going to be such a high level of essence of reality revealed that this, which we call now the infinite God, which is incomprehensible, it'll, it'll be part of our day-to-day -day lives. Like the Rambam says, the whole world will be filled of the knowledge of God. Nowadays, people, what, what's the main occupation of people now? Pretty much the future, right? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be this? Will I be happy? Will I be rich, right? What, what, how should I take the future? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be... Blah, blah, blah? Am I going to be sick? About that? People have to save up money for the future, the future, the future. But it's good. It's good to think about the future. But people are worried about the future. They're worried about what's going to be. It's very uncertain. And it's true. It's certain. It's un it is uncertain. Right? It says in the future, people will be only interested in the creator of all being constantly. That's all. He creates the past. He creates the future. He creates this. That's all people will be interested. That's the level of Soviet Kaomi. God will permeate everything. We'll see. He does now. He'll be. What's going to cause that this tremendously high level, which is the essence of Judaism, so we thought, well, that's going to be the big shofar. That's going to be the big shofar. One minute, 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 one minute. As I then, it says, you talk about shofar, God, oh, that's going to be the big shofar. And there was now there's higher and higher and higher, higher levels. Each level is bigger than the level before. Like we said, rove good low. And the future is going to be revealed the essence greatness of God. What's going to happen then? Right? Everybody's going to be like zombies. It's going to be this big white light, right? And everybody will just be in bliss or they'll be burning or whatever it is. It says, no, what's going to be? Absolutely no one can understand what's going to be. It's going to be so infinitely good that we haven't got any way of receiving that good, right? What's good now? Let's say, for instance, they say, what's good now? 
Good news, you just won the International Infinite Lottery. What does that mean? You just won $100 trillion. Wow, that's, oh, I'm sorry, it's not a mis mistake. $100 quadrillion. Wow, that, that's, that, that's, that's pretty good. You know? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. That was the second prize. You got the first prize. You just won the whole entire earth. It's all yours. What, what am I gonna do with this? Oh, one second, I just got a message that I'm sorry. I hope I don't get fired from my job. It's not the whole entire earth. You have just won the whole entire universe. The whole entire universe is now yours. Congratulations, have a good day. What does that mean? What am I supposed to do? Listen, it's the best we can do. <laughs> they can give you the world, we'll give the angels and everything. That's the best, right? You go to heaven, uh, after you die, you go to heaven, you get eternal bliss. It's pretty, it's pretty good, yeah, but I mean, you can't accept a thing like that. What is it supposed to, not only do you get your, you get everybody's heaven. You get the whole universe, you get everybody's heaven. By us, that's what we call good. But our idea of good is so limited that we have no idea what it, what good is. Here the Rebbe is saying that God's goodness, his greatness is really infinite. That you get the whole world, you get the world to come. You get all the worlds to come. You get that. That's just a small aspect of God's creation. There's higher aspects than that. And if you got that, there's higher. What does it mean? What we are simply not able to receive good. We don't know what it is. By just, just how to say, avoiding the bad. Just shouldn't, shouldn't shouldn't get worse. A little bit better. Okay, yeah. Get another zero in your bank account instead of ten thousand dollars. You have hundred thousand. Oh, you're happy. Or maybe you're, you're maybe you're being singled out by the government. Who knows? It says in the future there's going to be a show for Godel. What does it mean? The Kamo shofar, just like the shofar of Rosh Hashanah. Now, it draws down from this level of Soviv Kolmim, which is above the world, into the world. In the future, there will be drawn down a higher level than the Soviv Kolmim, and it will draw the essence of God into the world. Azai, Ganke, and also the shofar will be drawing down from a level which is what's called God's Hats Um. The essence of God. That's why it's called a big shofar. What does it mean a big shofar? Not showing on the size. It's showing that it's greater than any measure, even any spiritual measure, even, even so we have called It's not in the, any sort of worlds whatsoever. What's going to, we have no comprehension what's going to be. And in short language, let's say it like this. We have no idea how lucky we are. We have no idea whatsoever how amazingly grateful that we should be to the Creator. That first of all, He's creating us, and second of all, that we can serve Him. It says there's going to be the raising of the dead. It says, Hine, mitzvahs, the commandments are not going to be negated in the future. Even the raising of the dead. We'll see. Rach, shalom, be open. There will be commandments, but the commandments won't be in the way they are now. Now we saw we do commandments to make the world a more godly place. In the future, we won't have to do commandments to make the world a more godly place. They won't, God will be totally revealed. What will we be doing the commandments for? It's God's will. Just to do God's will. Certainly not to receive any rewards. The highest will be in this world. And certainly not to please God. God will be infinitely pleased. He'll be here. The, the revelation will total oneness. We, don't, we won't understand it. Why will we do the commandments? Why? One second, one minute. Oh, rock. Because in the future, so now it says we say malchut to make God a king and zichronos to make God remember. In the future, we'll only have shofar bilvad. Shah shofar is the revealing of God's essence. And that's why it's called the big shofar. Why the big shofar? Shofar gadol. Hagam devamet, even though that every shofar is really the revelation of God's essence, like we said before. Kamosh like it says by the shofar, Ashrei am yodea trua, it says happy are the people that know the sound of the shofar. Yes, okay, just one second.
Ba'or Ponecha Yalechu says, because through the shofar that we sound now, it arouses the essence of God. And it says, or panecha kiritzi. Panecha means God's face, but it also means God's in, inside, which this is a revelation of God's upper will. That's what we reveal now when we sound the shofar. This is what's called sovev kolomim. We reveal it even now. Ach, but this is a called a regular shofar. But in the future, it will be drawing down this level, what's called raiva to call raivan, the will of all wills. In other words, God's will is what creates the spiritual and the physical. That's called Soviet Chalmin. In the future, there's going to be the will to have this will. Chubachin is a Ratzon, a Makar the Ratzon. This is God's will, the source of all other desires of God. This is above any sort of levels of Panemius, etc., that we said that we draw down nowadays by sounding the shofar. This is even above Soviet Chalmin, above this aspect of Soviet Chalmin. That's really going to be the whole thing of raising the dead. The dead will raise up. Why? I mean, just think about it. What do the dead have to raise up for? It says in the future that there's going to be what's called the raising of the dead. What's going to be the raising of the dead? All the souls, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all these big Siddiqui, Moses, they're all going to leave heaven and they're going to come down into be physical bodies. Huh? They're all going to come down and be alive in physical bodies. Why? Why? What, what's the reason for? Ask another question. One second. What about that question? You want an answer to that question? That's only going to be, the answer to that question will only be when it happens. There won't be any answers and there won't be any questions. It's going to be pure godliness. We have no idea. Listen, we have, basically, we have no idea what we're talking about over here. We're talking about the heavens, right? Going to heaven. What is heaven? He has any idea what's going on in heaven. It says that the pleasures, we talked about this before, one second in play in heaven is worth 70 years or whatever of all the pleasures of this world. That that makes sense. It doesn't make any sense, right? Makes no sense. In this world, the people they they win the lottery, they 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 drop dead, they have a heart attack. Right? It's too much, right? 80 million dollars. Oh, that's it. <clears throat> that is too much. We can't accept. The good, how much more so it says going to heaven, going to heaven, a person has to die in order to get into heaven. Only the biggest Siddiqui says, but in the future, there's going to be a revelation of truth in this world that we're going to see how that this world is higher than any of the spiritual levels that we basically have no comprehension of now. In the future, we'll understand all the spiritual levels, all these Kabbalah books, it'll be simple. What's going to be above us then? What's going to be above? It says there won't be any above and below. There won't be above and below. The heavens won't be below the earth. There won't be time. There won't be this. Therefore, the essence, we'll see that the essence was really this physical world. And what we did in the physical world, totally incomprehensible. Why not leave the souls in heaven? What's wrong with heaven? Leave the souls up there in heaven. Let them bask in the rays of the essence of, of Chachma, of Atzilus, Right? The essence of God before the tzimtzum and ak, whatever, all these levels. What's wrong with that? Right? No, that's only small, small stuff, the small change. Come on. In the future, there's going to be the big chauffeur. The big chauffeur is going to show that all of these levels, Kabbalistic, whatever you want to call it, spiritual levels, are like nothing. That's like nothing. It's like small change. Huh? Like in small change. You go to the store, and the person in the store overchanges you. He overcharges you a penny. How do you care a penny? You know, you got to get, get mad about a penny. Even the biggest maniac doesn't get mad about a penny. Well, all of the heavens and all the worlds will see is like a penny. It's like nothing. Right? What's going to be the essence of God? The essence of God is going to be revealed in this world. Physical bodies, physical world, physical, the soul, spiritual will come into the physical. Does that make any sense? Absolutely not. Right? If you ask me, what's wrong with heaven? Going to heaven. Perfectly okay. I got a better idea. Don't die at all. I have to die. Why should I die? I don't want to die. I don't want to go to heaven. I'll stay here and I'll do the commandments. I won't understand anything. So what? I believe I'm doing what God wants. That's okay. Not, not bad for me. It beats going to hell and I mean, going to getting buried and everybody crying. What do you have to have that for? He says, no, that's not the way it goes. People die. They go to heaven. In heaven, it's worth it. You get all these pleasures. And all of them are like nothing compared to the revelation that's going to be with Mashiach when we'll see that this physical world 
and the commandments we did in this physical world were infinitely, infinitely, not, the world is, is not even higher, you can't say it, more real and valuable than the highest of heavens. Therefore, the soul will come into the body. It makes no sense. It's something that's infinitely good. That's the big shofar. It's bigger than any big we can possibly imagine. And that's what we're waiting for, and that's what has to happen any second now. Okay, let's do the Dabar Malchus. Ready? Here we go. That's the big shofar. Sure, you can wait. In the meantime, sound the regular shofar. Uh, 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 uh.